Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Sharing Tokyo, Artifice and the Social World, edited by Moitzen Mustafa Vian Kayoko Ota and published by Akhtar. Tokyo, the world's largest metropolis, is a city of wonder with a vast array of different atmospheres and characteristics. The latest examples of contemporary architecture stand in close proximity to historic districts. Massive buildings made of concrete and glass rise next to modest wooden structures that recall the city's past. Yet, much of Tokyo is a city of anonymous buildings realized after the destruction caused by the Allied firebombing of the city during World War II. Many of these buildings are covered with lifeless surfaces of white mosaic tiles, clean and hygienic, making it easy to wash away environmental detritus. But, despite the anonymity of much of its architecture, Tokyo manages to sustain a liveliness and a dynamism rarely experienced in other cities of the world. Why is that? Why does Tokyo possess such vibrancy as a capital when it does not boost the same caliber of urban architecture as, say, Rome or Paris? Perhaps part of the answer lies in the city's capacity to accommodate the contrast between the scales of its architecture, from that found along its main urban arteries to the more intimate and interior scale of smaller back streets and alleyways. This contrast is sustained by Tokyo's planning regulations, which equates the width of the street to the permittable size of buildings. But the historic distinctions between the scales of main streets versus back streets is being eroded by the increasing homogeneity of more recent large-scale developments, some of which occupy the equivalent of two or more mega-size urban blocks. These large urban fragments, at times akin to a city within a city, generate their own logic of formation as well as their own sense of diversity and excitement. But for the participants, the experience of such places is always framed in relation to their awareness of the totality of a development. And once, like the difference between the experience of a typical street with its anomalies and that of a shopping mall with its adherence to the pure rationality of a system and little or no room for breaking and interpreting the rules. This is essentially one of the major differences produced by the increasing privatization of the public domain. This book opens the possibility for different ways of recalibrating the relationship between new developments and traditional neighborhoods. Such rethinking requires greater collaboration between the developers, the city and its inhabitants. Machi Tsukuri, the Japanese method of intercommunity dialogue introduced in the 1960s, already provides a formal mechanism for discussions of local projects. But what needs to be nurtured more is the aspirational role of urban governance, both in terms of helping shape future visions and in safeguarding the rights of the city's population. This is also why the notion of sharing can be a useful catalyst for imagining how one might construct alternative future communities. In preparation for such a vision of the city, this book and its contributors provide both an understanding of Tokyo and its formation, as well as the role that architecture can and is playing in changing certain patterns and habits of development. Of particular interest is the way in which even small projects can be viewed in terms of their urban contribution. The framework provided by this book and its exploration of the indispensable connections between social and spatial imaginaries will hopefully be of value to other contexts and locations beyond Tokyo and beyond Japan. Ultimately, our aim has been to reconsider the status of contemporary urban design and to seek alternative ways of describing the relation between architecture and urbanism. 
Sharing Tokyo is the first volume in a series based on research into urbanism and architecture at the Harvard University Graduate School of Design under the umbrella japanstory.org, with content ranging from critical discourse, research and narrative, to photography and music. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.